Hello, I'm Sonal Chaudhary from Hug, and today I have with me here Greg Fleck, who's from the product management team at Hug. Today we will be talking about LOD and LOQ, one of the episodes in the Ask the Expert series. Greg, in our dechlorination episode, we talked about different analytical instruments that could be used to monitor chlorine while we are going through the dechlorination process. And one thing that came up like very clearly is that these instruments need to be accurate. Can you explain a little bit more about what does LOD and LOQ mean? So the limit of detection is the point at which you can say definitively that you have proof of the presence or absence of an analyte, in this case, total chlorine. The LOQ is the point above which your accuracy specifications are valid. So then you can say we can accurately quantify the amount of, of uh, chlorine that's present. Between the LOD and the LOQ, you have proof of presence, but you can't accurately quantify it yet. Mm -hmm. So what I like to think about in the relationship of, of these and, and your measurement range is where your fully credible data is coming from. And I think about fully credible data as being measurement values above the LOQ or below the LOD. And when we think about dechlorination uh, and ultra low range chlorine measurement, this is really important for two reasons. One is for customers that are trying to completely remove chlorine from, from the system, the LOD is a really important number. So the lower that limit of detection is, the closer you can come and have, uh, have confidence that your chlorine or your lack of of chlorine or absence of chlorine is below that number. So if your limit of detection is eight and you're measuring zero, you're confident that your chlorine concentration is below. If your LOD is 30 and you're measuring zero or you're measuring 15 or you're measuring 20, all you know is there's an absence, but it could be anywhere between zero to 30. For your LOQ, that number becomes really important in your process control. So the lower that number is, if you have a target residual chlorine concentration, let's say of 25 or 30 parts per billion, having an LOQ that uh, gives you accurate concentration there can help you really refine your, your system and control to that number. Um, if you have an LOQ of 90 and a target chlorine concentration of 30, it, it doesn't really make sense. If you're measuring 90, you could have 90, you could have 60, you could have 120 parts per billion, difficult to control with that range. Um, when you're 24 plus or minus eight, much more precise level of control. So if I understand this correctly, if I had a residual chlorine limit of 35 ppb, right? I would want my instrument to have a LOQ of less than that, right? Of 20, 24 ppb, so that I know that the reading that I'm uh, seeing like at 30 or 35, that's accurate. Yeah, that's right, especially if you're trying to control uh, and, and leave some of that controlled residual um, at around 30, 35, having an LOQ that's below that to be able to control that process well is important. Uh, if you're trying to remove completely, then again, I would look at the limit of detection and how low can you have that limit of detection to give you accurate, or to give you confidence that let's say your want is to be zero or as close to zero as possible mm -hmm. and your need is to be below 35 parts per billion mm -hmm. the loq is going to help you confidently satisfy the need and the lod satisfy satisfy the want of mm -hmm. the absence of chlorine so what happens if uh, there is a chlorine residual that that falls between the lod and loq right like for ultra low range lod is 8 ppb loq is 24 ppb so if there is a residual limit of let's say 16 is that credible? Yeah, so if you're reading 16, you can have confidence that there is chlorine present in the water, um, but not that it's within the accuracy range. So I couldn't say it's 16 plus or minus eight mm -hmm. in that case. If that's really the limit that you would control to, in order to keep to that credible data, I would try to stay below eight parts per billion to say, okay, I can definitively say that, that I have no proof that there's chlorine present, and then you're no, you know you're below your control limit of 16. Okay, so credible data is when our readings are below LOD or out, above LOQ. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so do you have any examples from 
the testing at customer sites where we switched from a CL17 to ultra low range CL17, since one of the key differences there is the LOD and LOQ and how they were able to make better decisions? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. We actually had a customer site that had a control limit of 35 parts per billion residual chlorine and had been measuring with the standard CL17, wanted to measure as a contrast with the ultra low range CL17 as well. It's important to keep in mind that that control limit of 35 parts per billion falls right within that uh, range of above the LOD of, of 30 parts per billion and below the low Q of 70 parts per billion. So most of the data that we were getting from the standard CL17 was in that range, typically built between 30 and 50 parts per billion. Mm -hmm. By contrast with the ultra low range CL17, most of the data that we were getting was below the limit of detection. So very lo low levels of chlorine measuring below eight parts per billion, giving them a lot of confidence that they were looking at credible data and then that data was showing them that they were below their control limit of 35 parts per billion. When we looked at the data in aggregate across 10,000 measurements, what we found is that 1.7% of the data for the standard CL17 was considered fully credible, either above the LOQ or below the LOD. By contrast, over 97% of the ultra low range CL17 data was fully credible, measuring below the LOD or above the LOQ. So how did that help them make better decisions? Yeah, it really gave them confidence in their process that they were removing the possibility of disinfection byproduct formation and meeting the strict uh, limits placed on their product water. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time today, Greg.